Hey, Daros, be quiet. Pipe down back there, Daros. Daryl, Daro. Uh, so thanks again for coming uh, tonight. A little housekeeping for you. Uh, if you have to use the restroom, 10 feet uh, down this hallway to the left, you're right there. Uh, how many of you are members already of the museum? Almost uh, very good. If you uh, are not a member and you paid for tonight's uh, presentation, all you have to do is go down to the gift shop after tonight's presentation and say, hey, I paid. Let's apply it to a membership. So um, then you can see every speaker presentation we have, plus have unlimited visits to the museum. So it's a good deal all the way around. So keep that in mind. You can go right down after tonight's um, uh, presentation. So uh, a couple of people like to introduce our curator um, at the museum, Mr. Guy Darrell. Maybe we should start calling you Mr. Dinosaur or something. They might, they might remember that. Name. <laughs> Actually, this is the, the Darrow clan here tonight. Right behind him is his brother, Fred. Fred does a lot of the staging of the exhibits and uh, is an all-around um, hands-on guy for the museum here. And another third Darrow. How many Darrows are there? Scott Darrow. And we'll hear uh, from him. And then back in the corner is Bernie Darrell <laughs> and Sarah Darrell. The museum is supported solely on uh, admissions and donations, sponsorships, and uh, a grant here and there uh, that we get. Tonight's presentation is sponsored by uh, Mike and Joe Nagger of Nagger Forest Products. And you guys are here. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you. museum really uh, is sustained largely on donations uh, and sponsorships uh, such as yourself. So we certainly uh, appreciate that. And we, we couldn't keep the doors open if it wasn't for that. So um, I think uh, the big thing coming up is our uh, Ferdinand uh, Rocher and John James Audubon days coming up on April 13th, 12th and 13th. And um, uh, the corner in the uh, uh, St. Jen Gallery there is kind of empty right now. Uh, that's where it's going to be. And um, one of our uh, volunteers, uh, Carolyn Bach, she has done extensive research. Uh, you know, a lot of people think uh, the Audubon, they remember the Audubon birds, this big old box of birds that was at the old museum location. We moved it here. We haven't had it on display. But that's all people know. Oh, the Audubon birds. There is such a backstory concerning those birds, you wouldn't believe it. And Carolyn has put all of it together, a great timeline. Ferdinand Rozier and John James Audubon, they came from the same town in France. They knew each other, their parents knew each other. Their father said, go to the new world, make it on your own. You're not gonna do it here in France. At the time, the um, climate just wasn't good in France at the time. So she's got a whole backstory for you. So it's a fascinating weekend uh, all the way around. So that's Audubon Days coming up on um, uh, April 12th and 13th. So, all right. And uh, we've got one more presentation coming up uh, April 24th, do we not? Apex uh, Rookies up the road there, Corey. Uh, they've got a fascinating history uh, to tell. So we hope you uh, join us for that one as well. So let's get going with tonight's presentation. This fellow, I talked to him on the phone uh, a week or so ago, and you were just a plethora of energy, man. Well, you know, <laughs> I have my big cup of coffee or... You must have. You must have. Fun guy. Brian Waldrop from the Missouri Stream Team. He is the Missouri Stream Team, Stream Team Coordinator, uh, as well as a, a biologist. And you have a lot of other titles going your way. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it was like sheets and sheets of titles your way, but a uh, very fun guy. He's going to tell you all about the Missouri Stream Team and some uh, exciting things coming your way. Done. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, first, who is a, an official Missouri Stream Teamer in here? What's your number? I signed up and I'm half brain dead. Yeah. I can't remember anything, but yeah. they know me. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, I like that attitude. Now, everybody needs to get a shirt tonight, so everybody size it out there somewhere. What's your Stream Team? Which one? 31, 3797. Big River, League of Watershed Guardians. Um, what am I leaving out? I'm leaving out several. <laughs> oh, Blues Creek Watershed Partnership, my local watershed, Sandy Creek. 
watershed partnership. But uh, <laughs> show's over, folks. <laughs> Sarah. Sarah, what's your stream team? 168. Better known as? The Great 168. And Bernie and the Connor? Mighty two of them. So the stream team numbers, which is pretty fascinating about the stream team numbers, is we don't recycle the numbers. So if you have stream team number one, which they're in here, that is your number forever. We never recycle these numbers. So like Scott, 31, and then of course the great 168 uh, and the 211, those are some of the newest or oldest numbers, lower numbers. So we've been, but that doesn't take away the new energy coming into the, you know, where they're on the Mississippi. So, um, yeah, Bernie and I, you know, we're, we're knocking out the Merrimack and everything else, Scott tying flies and, and fly fishing and cleaning up all that, doing water quality, Sarah just being Sarah. Um, you know, you'll see some, a picture or two, and then I'm looking forward to catching up with you. So, yeah, we're in trouble. So, uh, like she said, I'm Brian Waldrop. I uh, work for the Missouri Department of Conservation and the relevancy branch, bringing people to nature. I oversee the stream team program in the St. Louis and Southeast region. I have the Missouri Master Naturalist Tri Chapter, so there's three chapters in the St. Louis region. Um, I am also overseeing the stash your trash bag, so if you go floating, the little red bags you get, that's me. Let's see, what else do I do? The Adoptive Access Program, the monofilament, uh, tubes for uh, monofill or the fishing line that's enough and then Scott wants me to do a presentation in July and I said yes so you know how it goes and luckily this year we're celebrating our 35th year so Scott when was uh, when did the Missouri stream team officially become a team well, who now, what was it now what, did, what was the exact date uh, it was was it 84? It was Mark Van Patten's group, Ruby Fly Fishers, right? Mm, February 1st of 1989. Oh, that late, okay. Yep, and that's where we're starting. So uh, what is the stream team? Um, for the most part is we try to educate the citizens. Not we, not me. The stream teamers educate the citizens. Uh, stewardship events like water quality monitoring, the litter cleanups, the tree plantings, and then the advocacy. There's a much smaller group of people who don't want to get out and get dirty or do something like that, but they want to write the letters or they want to go to the Capitol or work with their city officials to better the streams uh, or floodplains or parks in their, in their <coughs> town. So it started back in 1988 at the first Rivers and Streams Conference. And it was this guy's fault he had this hankering to find out if he could take um, normal citizens uh, like you and I out there and give them the supplies and the knowledge and um, but never tell them where to go do a cleanup. It's all on you. Other states have asked us to help set up their own stream teams but then that, that state goes, well you need to clean up that stream 30 miles that way but I got a stream in my backyard and I don't want to, I'm passionate about this, I don't care about that one. So they lose their volunteers. We just give you the supplies and the knowledge to do so. So Joe Bichon, the godfather, he is the one. And then you got this guy. Who knows this guy? Yeah, he is, um, he's my mentor. So Joe made a nuanced pitch not only for the seed money from the EPA, but also EPA's institutional support for the stream team quality event or effort. His emphasis was on the collective efforts of groups of stream teams to promote or improve stream quality, not quantity. Uh, watersheds, the stream corridor, and the stream corridors. He stressed that the grant would be for advocacy actions any kind of stream team event would be considered advocacy. These activities could include anything involving uh, the waters of Missouri, 
such as stream, te uh, stream cleanups, monitoring water quality, tree plantings in the stream corridor, educational classes, monitoring level uh, legislative efforts, stenciling storm drains, and as many other activities as could be considered under the broad term of advocacy. So that was the definition or the, since then, if a stream teamer thought, you know, I want to go tackle that winter creeper or honeysuckle or kudzu, which is up in St. Louis now, we're getting ready to do an event just to, so we started a new activity called Habitat Improvement. So now Habitat Improvement's there. So honey, honeysuckle hacks, gross. Uh, makes me cough and sneeze and then my hands usually bleed by the end of the day. But these are two, uh, two um, if it wasn't for these two, would we have a stream team? I don't know. So, yes sir? Is Joe still alive? He is. He is in Oklahoma or Florida somewhere. So every once in a while we get a message from him. But he's still kicking it, a little slowing down. But uh, He did a lot to save the Merrimack River. Yes, he was influential in stopping the dam. And so if you get a chance, you can go to the State Historical Society. You got to call them first and say, I want to check into Joe's 30 boxes of stuff that he's archived there. All the videos and all the papers and all the uh, film or the fish and not fish that swim with the fish. Well, you know, we're old enough to know what fish is. So, and then where did it start? Down in Waynesville, Missouri, um, a bunch of fly fishers, uh, both men and women, got tired of catching crap like that. There's a small road that uh, is about right there. It's just up a little hill. And folks, you know, it, t it costs money to get rid of things, so why not dump it in the creek next flash flood or localized rain event? It'll be washed down. Or things like this. So they take the time to spend to tie a fly and then you cast it out there and you lose it on something like that. So you lose it in a tree, not a big deal. But when you lose it on trash, so they started, the Rubidoux fly fishers started stream team number one. A pamphlet was sent out by Joe Bichant. It was maybe a hundred pamphlets that were sent out across the state. We know so many people who had them, like a Julie Wacker of stream team 100. Uh, Mark Van Patten, Ron Coleman from uh, Operation Clean Stream, stream team number five. Uh, the Swoboda, stream team number three. Mark got his. He filled it out and mailed it back in. He, uh, Joe Pichon, received his first. He became stream team number one. And within a week, we had 10, 12 teams. And within the first year, we had 100. That's pretty good. Now we're sitting at 6,690. Um, but what's even more amazing is <clears throat> this would never happen today because you know politics, how smooth it's all running. You had Ashcroft and, uh, uh, and Carnahan at the first cleanup. They both got in the water. There's film of them in the water picking up trash. You know, that just, that won't happen today. And there's the infamous red stream team bags. When those red stream team, paint, uh, team bags came out, it was the conservation <laughs> agents that were running the show on that. And then, I think it was 1989, the end of the summer, Ashcroft had uh, made a proclamation as the year of Missouri streams. So he saw the value of volunteers. Um, what's the famous say saying, Sarah? A volunteer is only worth the amount of money you pay them. It's so far from the truth. Uh, the amount of money that uh, we save uh, the state. So after three years, a lot of these teams had already cleaned up their section and they wanted more, which is amazing. You know, they got it all cleaned up. So we invited Department of Natural Resources in. In the beginning, it was only Conservation Federation of Missouri and the Missouri Department of Conservation. So we brought in the Missouri Department, or Department of Natural Resources to do water quality monitoring. So they could test the waters and see what's living in the stream so they're still doing their stewardship work. So water quality monitoring came in and that's one of the pictures from the Rubidoux way back in the day. 
So during the 20th anniversary, um, for the old cronies that are still kicking it, met down there where the first cleanup was in um, Waynesville, and the tree on the left is what is called the governor's tree. And the governor had stated um, at the first cleanup, uh, Governor Ashcroft said uh, something while he was planting this tree, which is referred to as the governor's tree. He said, you know, a few of you have started something here and you know you are successful when tens of thousands follow you what you have started. 20 years later, uh, and you know what they have. And now we're, you know, we got over 90,000 volunteers, almost 100,000 volunteers. Not, of them, not all of them are active, but we do have tens of thousands of are active each year. It's pretty impressive. Some of them only go out once a year, and that's fine because that's one less piece of trash out there. And then you got some nuts, like the guy back in the corner, who's out there every day doing this uh, because he has chosen the Stream Team way of life. So here's our partners. Uh, we're the ones, Sarah's laughing in the background. We pet Bambi. We have one regulation and that's our uh, hunting code. Then you have the dark side, the Missouri Department of Natural Resources. They're the regulatory agencies. They're the ones that are making things so much better by trying to stop. Um, I won't get into that. We'll just say, they're our regulatory agency. And then we have our uh, Conservation Federation of Missouri. They're av our advocates for all wildlife, <coughs> both fish and uh, animals and anything else in the land at Jeff City and in uh, the Capitol in D Washington, D.C. Then we have Stream Teams United. There are our water advocates, and they only really go to Jeff City. So who's heard of Paddle Mo or Paddle Missouri? Who, I know Sarah's participated, Bernie's participated. Uh, Paddle Mo is an all-inclusive package that uh, Stream Teams United puts together. Uh, this year we're gonna be putting in at, where are we putting in this year? We putting in a Herman? We're only going to do um, 50 miles, 58 miles on the Missouri this year, but we stop at all the towns. You get to eat their food. So if you're stopping in Herman or Washington or New Haven, you get that flavor. Uh, their beverages, uh, stay in a bed and breakfast or camp or whatever you want to do. The only thing you have to do is pick up a fork, pick up a drink, and pick up a paddle. Everything else is done for you. So you do have to put up your tent, but you tear it down, you lay it there, and we'll come pick it up, and we'll make sure it's at the next stop. And then we have a very special one this year on the Merrimack, celebrating 30, 25 years for Stream Teams United. We're putting in at Woods and Carrier Woods, upstream from the hatchery for Merrimack Springs, and going all the way down to Indian Springs. It's only about 30 miles, but again, uh, it's all inclusive. Everybody's staying at the same place each night. We'll just transfer you up and down the river. So stormwater runoff. Uh, why has this been an issue? Um, a lot of people back in the day and every once in a while I still get it, it's like, why are people dumping in the rivers? Well, it's a very small percentage unless you're driving over the, uh, the river and a trucker throws out a trucker bomb or something like that, but uh, who laughed? Because <laughs> you know what it is, don't you? We saw a, a semi off the side of the road that had eggs in it, and it was all over, and I thought she was gonna pick those eggs up. <laughs> oh, that could have been stinky, or foul. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> So stormwater runoff, that's how the majority of the stuff gets to the rivers. Um, you know, with the localized rain or what we're gonna get next week with the inches of rain or snow melt or anything else, anything that falls out of our cars, gets on the pavement, 
gets there. But it's just, it's more than just trash. It's the oils, it's the brake dust, it's the tire uh, dust and everything else that gets there and um, harms our wildlife. Um, boy, if we only had some people who would regulate. Uh, oh, I'm getting the look. So she's a stormwater regulator for the state of Missouri. So that's why I always put this in there because I've learned so much from her. Um, the annual report. Like I said before, a volunteer is only worth the amount of money they pay. That was a famous line by somebody who no longer has their job anymore. So litter pickups, this is the 2022 report because we're still getting in the 2023 reports, which should be out uh, hopefully by the first week of May. Um, so 8,000, now remember COVID was going on. Uh, 8,294 participants on litter pickups, uh, total of 38. 1,102 hours, 194 tons, and of uh, $1 million, see, is that $1,092,003.32. Uh, $1, in 1999, or uh, 2019, these were tripled numbers. So COVID really kind of, and we weren't asking anybody to go out or do anything. We didn't put a lot of events on. Water quality, uh, we still had the workshops. Uh, but we did them um, hybrid, so we weren't out in the field, so we all did everything. But combined, uh, a value that we saved the state is $1,970,518.30. Um, last year was a really busy year, and this year is out of control. So I'm really looking forward to the 2023 annual report, because we should have doubled this uh, this year. So now, you become a stream teamer, you're eligible for all these wonderful workshops. One of my favorite that kind of uh, made me go back to school and do some other things was the water quality monitoring. My former supervisor, my mentor, Mark Van Patten, he goes, you know, uh, I want you to take this class because I just had taken a fly tying class because he knew I fly fish and he goes, I want you to take this class and learn these insects. You'll become a better fisher person. It's like, okay. Well, then I wound up going down for years and years, just learning about these insects and only tying flies and never going fishing. So it's just kind of that rabbit hole. And what we're gonna teach you is all these insects. These are only the keystone species, the uh, indicator species in the stream, because there's a lot of other things that are living in the stream. So when you are at your um, light on the porch or something at nighttime, there's a great chance, especially here in St. Jen, there's a great chance you're, you're seeing a lot of these insects that have emerged or hatched out of the water and are dancing around your, your lights at nighttime. So this is the, the, uh, the famous blue bug card. Uh, this is what Scott and I grew up on playing with. This is the, uh, we got a bigger one now, but this is only the ones we're asking you to know. And each one has their special movement. Oh, what date your uh, Ozark fly fisher, Scott? I'm sorry, what was that? What, what date in July is your? Oh, that is, it's the weekend of the 20th. Everybody here is invited to come. We, we put a spotlight on the uh, stream team program, what they do. We'll be monitoring on stream. If anybody's unfamiliar with that, they want to see what it's all about. We'll be doing that, and we have various presentations throughout the, the weekend. It starts on a Friday evening, Friday and Saturday is the main days. Um, and our theme this year is aquatic uh, worms. These two right there. The three different, we're gonna do the three different uh, phylums of worms, round, flat, and uh, segmented. So that's why we fish with worms, because we have the segmented worms our terrestrial friends that we dig up to take to the river look almost identical to the ones that we catch in the water. So it's always on the fish's menu. Because if you don't, if a fish is not familiar with something, they're not gonna eat it. So if it's always on their menu, you would eat it. <coughs> and then maybe we can do a little presentation on exactly how the horsehair worm uh, goes from stage to stage. It's pretty, um, I don't know how to say it, busting, cracking open, 
kind of like the, the movie Alien. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, when it's coming out in here. <clears throat> Good times playing with these insects. The other workshops, the other one that just took place this week, that's why I put this in here, is understanding streams. And for the stream teamers who haven't taken this, take it. Just do it. It is the best class that you can take, because there's people in the back room that will vouch for that. It is uh, a three-day or a four-day class, depends on which one you sign up for. And it's everything about hydrology, and it's all the mathematical equations, and I don't want to scare you away from that. Um, it's the investigations that you do when you're out there being a, a stream biologist. Why, are, why is this area eroding so quick? Is it something happening downstream, or is it happening upstream? Uh, you know, that looks like erosion, but that's actually a very uh, stable embankment. Is this a meandering sandbar, or is this a armored sandbar? So it's a, it's a really, it happens out in uh, Sedalia. So I highly suggest you take in that. So it'll be coming up soon. Maybe, there we go. And most important, if you're a Missouri Stream Team, you can get all the free trees you need to rebuild your stream banks, to put in parks. So the Seedling Arter Farm, I think September 1st, is the first day of opening orders. I suggest that you are on your computer on August 31st at 11.59, have everything typed in, and when it hits 12.01 or 12, you hit that button because within a day, most of them are sold out. And where they have the price, you put your stream team number, and then they ship them for free in the spring. It's as easy as that. Eagle Scouts, so if you know of any Scouts, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts that need projects, um, Boy Scouts that need their badges and stuff, and then the honorary little Girl Scouts, they look so innocent here, but then they get a little <laughs> amped up after they have that Mountain Dew or something. It's the wrong thing to feed them, especially when they're sitting around a tray of insects. So the little brownies here, they got to cross over. They got their little uh, pen or badge by doing some water quality stuff. Um, so yeah, good times out there. If you know any scouts, uh, if your kids or your kids' kids um, have anybody, send them my way and we'll get a project and get them out there and we'll do a cleanup or some of them have never been in a stream and that's sad. So then there's tires. <laughs> so I try to keep uh, the rest of these until the very end local events within a county or two. Um, this happened back in two, 20, 2013 in Perry County. It was a two and a half day cleanup. Um, it was a free two day event for anybody to bring in their tires if you lived in Perry County. Um, I think there was 22,000 tires plus. The last I heard, they all went over to the minimum security prison because they had a tire shredder uh, and they were taking them and grinding them up there. Then, <laughs> um, me and a coworker put a little tiger team together. Um, My portion of the team got 907 tires. The other one got one. But his one was 2,873 pounds cleaned, you know, and um, how do you think he found that? Well, I mean, how can he not miss an eight foot tall tire, 44 inches wide tire? He found it by Google Maps or Google Earth. He could see it on Google Earth, and it was on Little Whitewater Creek or Whitewater Creek down in Perry or one of the, you know, just down the street here, and he found it. Um, it was so large, he had to cut off the back of his trailer to winch it on his trailer because his trailer had sides, you know, and so he had to do that, and 
Uh, you could have heard a pin drop when he pulled in with his trailer that day at the Perry County uh, Bridge, uh, bridge uh, Department. And what we were doing, we were going down in sinkholes. And then he's just playing in the creek. But, you know, to, uh, <laughs> he would do it to me. Bernie's sitting in the corner. So give a round of applause to Bernie for getting that one tire. <laughs> Bernie, you're the man. Love you, you know that. Hey, Brian. Yes, sir. You gotta tell, how many tires are you and Bernie responsible for? How many thousands? You guys got a rough idea, don't you? You know, if, if we stay between two and 5,000 tires a year, and with him getting more, a lot more, but us approaching both close to 25 and 30 years doing this, we're over 125 to 130,000 tires. And, but we go after them. We have tire only cleanups. There's something fun about that. And one of our buddies, uh, you know, because we know how many we can get in their canoe, he got 22 in his canoe. So he's the reigning champ right now. And that's a 17 foot grumman. And he has 22 in there, you know? So, yeah, that deserves, you know, he is the champ. These, these guys are paid up with it like you can't believe. They'll drive to Kansas City to do a stream cleanup on a weekend. Yeah, I, I, all the way up to the, the first day I'm in the Missouri, uh, Nebraska, or... Yeah, I uh, work for Jefferson County Health Department. I do mosquito control, and I'll set out traps. And there's a place over in Arnold off Tenbrook Road. I pull in there, who's that down here? I'll be dang, it's Bernie down here, and he's... He's cutting rims off in the middle of the day on a weekday. He's down there. He just loves this. This is his thing. It's addicting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, but it takes teamwork. You know, yes, you could always do this by yourself. Is it fun to be by yourself? Sometimes. Solitude's great. Why is it acceptable for people to throw it away? Can't it be made inacceptable? I mean, we don't drive drunk anymore. People used to do it in the old days. It's not acceptable to make this. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, most of the tires, this is an old tractor tire. This is probably 30 plus years old. Poverty, lack of education. A lot of people use them for years on the big river. They used them as short up their bags. Yeah. I'm sorry, but they don't see. They fill up, yeah. and that's it. And I know of a beautiful lake in Jefferson County that was spot by one night. I realized they had thrown giant tires like that in there. For, for fish catfish. habitat. Catfish nesting. You know. So it's a lot of education. You know, we can get into what a tire does in the water. And it costs to get rid of them. That's, that's the main reason. Because you can save that 20 bucks. Yeah, when you go into, you know, it's like, well, I'm going to have to charge you an extra 20 bucks for disposal. For, I'll keep them. I'll put it in my garage. Then they sit there for a year or two. And it's like, how long does it take to get four tires out of the back of your trunk or out of the back of the bed? Less than 10 seconds. You know? follows up what I told you earlier about. I don't always get them out of the river. Sometimes I beat them there. You know? Oh, we know that because you know. Bernie's been working on a little creek near Ridgewood, stopping him from getting, and this is one of them that passed Bernie's watch, and, but it takes a teamwork, takes teamwork to work some of these. So it took a long time to dig it up just to break that suction. Once the suction is broke, then it's, I can't say they're easy, but a lot easier. Uh, they get lighter and everything else. We're fixing to cheat on one. I've got a local tow truck company has guaranteed me when the water goes back down if I can swim under and hook it. I got a, I got some for you then. Hang on. So <laughs> well, I can swim under there and hook it, but it, it's like that. It's not coming out easy. But the exit I took to get here was Azora because I've been down uh, south uh, in the southeast region all day. Um, this is right off the Azora exit, uh, just about a mile and a half, two miles. And what's happening is, is sinkholes are there. And in these sinkholes, um, I'm not sure if the property owner knew what was going on or allowed this, but thousands and thousands and multiple thousands of tires have been dumped in this. 
So you can see how you know the daylight is casting down and one you know a couple tires at a time um, and then Bernie goes down and picks them up and brings them back and takes them to Dobbs. But this is how we've been getting them out. Uh, one toe strap and one rope at a time, a couple tires on that. And I don't know how many times you put it in drive and reverse, drive and reverse until we get them all out of there. Sad thing is, is the, 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 the room you saw there is there's a stream <coughs> flowing through that room at the back side. We know a lot of them tires have made it to the stream. We haven't made it to the next room to get down there. So we have to find another hole to go down and get them out or walk them up the stream to bring them back out. There's nothing easy. It's fun to say, I cleaned up a cave, but there's nothing fun about this cleanup. This is, this is, uh, yeah. Hey, you just also realize you got 50 snakes in your boat? <laughs> nah, it's just a snake. Yeah. We got a, and then you got that tire, and that's something like you're talking about. So this is on the Black River. Uh, I'm not sure uh, how far it's down on the Black River. It's in about 14, 15 feet of water. So what we'll do is um, some hot summer day, we'll, we'll go play with some toys and get it out. And what, go down there and put a couple of tractor trailer inner tubes in it, hit the air, get some of the water out, raise it, put a winch on it or something like that. I don't know, that's up to Bernie how he's gonna get it out. <laughs> and then you got things like this, you know, the dreaded, this is a very old picture, this is, I think this is from Arnold Park, um, you know, that tree's probably 20, 25, 30, older than that, because that looks like a polyester, polyglass tire, so poor, poor tree, um, but, uh, you know, you got special play tools. You can cut it off that tree, you know. Well, at least it protected it from the weed eater tree. Oh, man. <laughs> so, yes. The only good thing to do with a used tire is put it in the jaws of a tire shredder. So, <laughs> why? Yeah. Why? Um, Sarah and I were up in North County. We're getting ready for a humongous cleanup uh, this coming Saturday. What was I doing in the, some of the dump piles? Pulling out baby dolls and bowling ball pins uh, because eventually we can put them to use like that. <laughs> and so this is Bertie's trailer. You know, there was nothing better than, I forgot where we were going, and there was a car that passed us, and then the car slowed down and was tailgating or, or uh, pacing Bernie, and, but we forgot. We don't think about it anymore. It's just the trailer, you know? And then they're checking it out, and they come up, and they give us a look, and give us a, what kind of freaks are these? Um, it's just people who go and get tires and find a lot of baby dolls. Why are there so many baby dolls out there? You know? Whoa. I don't know. And then what I think is disturbing is this one, because that's so, that's a Taser Woods Conservation Area. That's just creepy. That looks too realistic. <laughs> so, um, and this is, this is why I do what I do, because it's really been a life-changing thing. It's, um, it's, what's the common theme on everybody's face? They have a smile. You know, there's something good about you know, at the end of the day, when you are filthy dirty, you've been out in the Merrimack or in uh, Deer Creek or Shady Creek or the Merrimack or uh, Rock Creek or the Merrimack and Castlewood, or when you find a woolly mammoth, oh. <laughs> or you you know you fill your first full dumpster at Booter Park. Who was talking about Booter Park earlier? Yeah, there, there's a dumpster. Julie Wacker, Stream Team 100 on the Upper Big. And this guy, this character here, he got into it. So I had to take a picture of him and it's just, you know, and then finding an old wagon wheel, the, the, uh, the metal part 
everything else is rotten. So that happens to be hanging on one of my trees at home. And this guy, he was so happy, filled four bags. He was done. But you know what? He knows for the rest of that day, for the rest of that week, that month, he knows he made a difference. So it doesn't take much. Oh, it's hard to see, but she's on an old uh, decrepit bicycle that the wheels are all tacoed and everything else. And even the young ones are finding strange things. So ha, I could go on, but I thank you. And um, let me tell you about Mary. So Mary and I go back some years. <laughs> uh, it was a, um, it was June-ish. Uh, we were doing a cleanup on the upper Merrimack River. Um, one of our buddies, Tanner, was there. And it's like, I'm going to go over there to the overflow channel. He was going to go to that side of river right. And I was going to go river left. And I saw a big chunk of styrofoam. It's like, I'm going to go out there and get that chunk of styrofoam. And so I walk out on the log. And as I'm reaching down to grab the chunk of styrofoam, she's looking back. <laughs> and her eyes are open. And it's like, ooh, I just got goosebumps again, you know? Still thinking about it. And I screamed. And Tanner knew it was not a normal yippee yippee scream. It was, hey, uh, something's hitting the fan scream. He comes uh, almost running across the top of the water. And he comes over there and he sees that I am ghostly white. And he can see that something's going wrong. And I give him, you know, the point because she's still there. And he comes out and his blonde hair, and now he's super white. Um, and then we noticed that there was a little chrome thing on her shoulder, and it was where her arms are supposed to attach. So we dove down into the four, four and a half feet of water. It was like all the decaying leaves, so as soon as we hit the bottom, it's just a big plume of blackness, that detritus that was coming up. And we brought her up, and. Water was coming out of every hole in her head, big old stream of water. Her real name is Karen. And how do you spell Karen? Who's a Karen in here? Not a Karen, <laughs> but his name Karen. So her real name is K-A-R-I-N. It's stamped in, but she's always been forever Merrimack Mary to me. So she travels with me everywhere I go. Uh, the first uh, travel she went with me was on the front of my canoe as we're going down the rest of the, the uh, cleanup. I took a couple ratchet straps, put her in her, her holes and uh, tied it to the seat. And then I quickly sent it to my supervisors. And then Monday morning on the social media, there was a stream team shirt uh, photoshopped on because she's cold. So um, then I brought her back and put a t-shirt on her and she has driven around with me in all my vehicles, especially my work vehicles, uh, with the life vest on because she'll never be found underneath another, you know, four feet of water. So I get to preach about the conservation department, the stream team program, and water safety. So it's a trifold there. Today I was down in Cape with the director and deputy directors. And they go, hey, you got a good looking, nice new truck out there. It's not new, it's a 2007. And it's seen its better days, it's a little rusty, a little denty, but uh, for what I do for the state, it's gonna do fine. And it's like, oh yeah, so you like the truck? And they're like, yeah, it's like, well, you know, it came in red, because it was all muddy and from the red clay down near Eminence. And it's like, well, how'd you know which one was mine? because she was sitting in the front seat. And the director and deputy directors, they know that. Because when we were down in Springfield with them, they go, you can't be driving around with somebody who's not an MDC employee or a state employee in your vehicle. And then they met her. So now she has permission to drive around because they know what I'm doing is I'm preaching the, uh, the stream team MDC and water safety. So they're pretty, they're pretty tickled about that. And then, coming this spring, I will need all your help. That is the big key, is, is I really would like to do a citywide cleanup of the two creeks that you have flowing 
eastward through the city um, and stopping everything like these gentlemen are doing, stopping everything before it gets to the Mississippi. And that's how, what, Gabori? Gabori. Okay, Gabore. So we would like to be in those two streams. There's a lot of private property. That's what I was going to bring up. We and need to get that out. Paper, radio, everywhere we can. And with your administration, your city hall, your council members, your aldermen, uh, we can all work together to get permission to tackle some of these things. If we're not going to be on the, the riparian, at least allow us to walk down the stream and sweep it. And we'll start at the uh, city's west edge and we'll go to the east edge. Um, and then bring in Scott and his uh, <laughs> folks and we're going to do a little water quality monitoring after we get done doing the cleanup to see what's living in this stream. So when you go to that stream, it's like, oh, it's, it's the north or it's the south. It's not a big deal. A big but yellow Labrador. Yeah, yeah. What? A big yellow Labrador. What are you talking about? <laughs> My dog, everybody in town knows, for the last 11 years. He, he lives in these streams cr in the Mississippi. Well, I'll tell you another story in a minute, but hang on. Keep that thought in mind. He never comes home dry. <laughs> but he comes home alive. Okay, um, and then we'll do some water quality monitoring. You know, we won't go through the full thing. We probably won't do chemistry, but I want you, I want you all to see what's living in this. And it's not the fish. You know, everybody knows what a fish looks like. I want you to see the insects, the real fish food. It's what they're eating all the time. And then for the, you know, then you take that knowledge and tell the person who is maybe harming that stream or damaging or throwing their leaves or organic material in there and raising the nutrient load and killing these insects it also kills the fish. So I just would like to have a good Saturday or Sunday St. Genevieve cleanup day. Brian, it, it, it's just, it, it's not just insects. Um, Aerobic bacteria that has to be there. Well, yeah, but what I'm saying is what we'll find. I mean, I was blown away when I saw how a leech swims. I had no idea. They're beautiful swimmers. Did you bring any macros? I wish I would have thought. No. I, could, I would have brought mine. I've been on the road all day. They would have been. A crane fly. You, you guys, at the first stream team event I was invited to, I went to it. A crane fly is what looks like a big mosquito on your ceiling in the summer. You know, the big monster yeah. mosquito-like things that they're are dancing big, around your wall? But their bodies are thin. But I can't the thing is, larva are as big as my little finger, and they swim like a fish. You would never, it's unbelievable. And here's the, here's the cool thing is, they bite in that stage. I've never had them bite me, but. Oh, well, okay. you know, you gotta squeeze them, you gotta get their head to pop out because they have a retractable head, <laughs> and they have a little beak, and it's it's uh, a you know, chitin. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's me, you know. And, and, and so you know, you pop it out, and, and it's a beak, and it it you feel it feels like a needle sticking in you. But when they're adult, they have no developed mouth parts. They don't eat. They don't drink. They don't even pee or poo. So what's great is I always tell the young kids is like. When they get in your house in the springtime and they're dancing around, instead of smashing them and then your parents have to clean up that nast, nasty streak, go up there and put your hand around it and grab it and then walk it out. Don't grab it by the leg because the leg will purposely fall off to save the body. And so you grab by the leg, they're going to fly off, grab the whole thing, they can't hurt you. And it's great fish food and they're a great bait. And they are wonderful swimmers. The first time we did it, Priscilla Stott, she was like my mentor. She's long out of the program. She took the tray and dumped it in the water, and I saw a crane fly go in the water. And a, a little panfish, it was a pumpkin seed or bluegill, just shot out, grabbed it. And I mean, what fish wouldn't want to eat that? Then he looks like you know. me now. Uh, then he, yeah. So let's talk about that little uh, Labrador you have. I think it's 120 pounds, but he, uh, he's been in the newspaper in town more than once. But we live right on the river, basically, and he's a river dog. He's well, I'm going to give you an assignment then. Every day. And, uh, 
I can tell what parts he's been on sometimes by the color of the soil. Yeah, what's on him. I don't know which direction he came from, and he never walks around the body of water. No. So what I want you to do is, um, most of us are probably still on Facebook because you know the older generation like us, anybody over 40 years old is on Facebook. Go to the Missouri Department of Conservation page and check out their last post. So one of the things I stress my volunteers to do is go out and pre-scout. You know, if, you know, you don't know, have to be looking through everything. It's kind of to determine how many dumpsters or how much supplies you need, how many volunteers are you going to need for that three hour cleanup or so. So you, you know, you kind of evaluate everything else. So we're up and we're walking an alley. Uh, it's all overgrown by honeysuckle and it's like, well that bag wasn't there last week. So we reached down and we pulled the bag back and the guy jumps back and he goes, oh my God, there's a dog. And it's like, oh no, not another one. Cause Sadly, you never hear the horror stories because I'm not going to tell you them. That's not right. It's not fair. I want you to come to the events. I don't want to scare you. Yeah. It moved. The dog moved. And immediately I went down there, put my hand on it, and I picked it up. And now you'll see on the Facebook page, it's at home. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I called Sarah and said, Sarah, I got something I'm bringing home. And she had the sink ready with doggy shampoo and we put it immediately into the sink and she washed it all up and dried it and you know we fed it and, and then she took the time out of her day to take it to the vet today to make sure it's healthy has a little skin ailments but you know when you're throwing away in the trash 15.5 pounds it's healthy it's gorgeous and um, yeah that's that's one of the that's a happy story because there's other things out there that we run across that are not so happy. But, um, you know, what I didn't put up here was all the funness that Bernie and I have had. I just try to give him trouble about his one tire. Um, where we were up in Watkins Creek and somebody goes, there's a tire. And, he, you know, we're like, that's my tire. Oh, no, that's my tire. And so we take off and, and he sits down. He's going to shimmy down on an eight foot embankment to get down to the bottom of the creek to get it. I thought I could just, you know, young and dumb. And I thought I could just quickly scamper down that foot caught, fell out feet on my face and ripped me from my, from my cheekbone all the way down to my collarbone, laid me open. And it's like, never lost a smile, but there's a picture of it. Do you know why? Before Bernie could help me get up, he had to take his camera out and get a picture of me. <laughs> so, you know, it's just one of them good things. There's the, the stream team is a blast. Uh, it is hard to work sometimes, but lifelong friends. You know, you, you, you meet people that um, it got me my job. Um, so I hope that over the next month, month and a half, we can have some powwows. You know, we can do some Zoom meetings, um, identify some troubled spots, and we're just going to have um, a good time. You know, maybe Scott can convince Fred and his other brother to have the St. Genevieve Museum Learning Center to become a stream team so we can receive a mini grant so we can pay for this and have a good lunch. So we usually do the best we can with what we pull out of the river. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, well, I found enough food yesterday um, doing that pre-scout. We had a, a, an old friend of ours, very young at the time, probably 12 or 13. His mom's like, take him to the cleanup, get him out of my hair. So we would take him down to Jack's Park concurrent. He was a great diver. You know, not diving off bluffs. He would just go down and he was good at getting cans. And he really wanted to get those cans that were unopened. And he really liked his Mountain Thunder and the fake Dr. Pepper and, and all those. And he would be such a sugar high. He was already amped up to begin with, but he would just drink all those. The cans were green <laughs> from, you know. Uh, 
So, and you know, he, we wouldn't allow him drinking his beer. You know, and uh, you know, one thing you do is, is when you do find a, a can, um, look what's in it when it's open. Because there's been a few times that we've found cans that have a crayfish in it that have grown and can't get out the hole. Yeah, I know, isn't that sad? So usually, well, like on the front of all my life apps, there's a knife, and we just cut it and let it free. Um, so yeah, and when we pull up nasty tires, they're usually caked with caddis fly larva and our other life. I try to scrub them off, clean them up at the end of when we get off the river. Uh, and now, most of the cleanups across Missouri are land-based. I just like the rivers too. Um, but when we get to the end, we usually turn our, empty the trash out, turn our canoes upside down, get water in it, wash them out. So all that life, all the little insects that are still in there, save them. Because I want to catch that fish that that's going to eat. So yeah. I bring my tire out and it'd be crushed with your caddis or black fly water and it's like, ah, and that's, I just kind of do a quick wipe off this. I mean, it's, this stuff's out there by the thousands. It's not going to really, make, but I just hate killing all that stuff. But I, you got to get the tires out. You got to get the tires out. There's too much nasty stuff on tires. Um, yeah, the Joachim, um, the Platten Creek, Little Whitewater Creek, the Big River is notorious for tires. Hey, yeah, but leave them be. Yeah. I like them. Uh, some of them, I mean, they're just, that stretch from the House Springs area all the way on down to the Merrimack ends. That before you hit. <sighs> before you hit the I, Merrimack. I, I, I had a trapper's license years ago and I trapped that section. And the first night that I hit spotlight on the riverbank, I'm looking at 10, 12 cars back in a row from the 50s. Yeah. And you, know, you wouldn't mess with them because the locals snagged catfish, grabbed them, because they nested in those cars. But Yeah, the last time I went noodling, yeah. it's, you know. <laughs> just joking. Yeah, I've got better things I'm to a, do. Sorry, yeah. it's just one of them things. Anybody's ever seen what a snapper will do to you? I don't know I'm about to stick my hand in that much. No. No, and but what's plastic? It's never going away. It's forever, including the fencing. Um, so I know Bernie helped me on the big river cleanup. I had Spire with me, uh, Spire natural gas, and so Bernie was going to go downstream. I was going to take everybody else upstream and then float back to Bernie. And about one mile from the end, there was this big orange green fencing from the sod fields wrapped around a tree and stuck my hand in it and my canoe kind of broke free. It was still sitting out in the sharp edged eddy, caught it and I couldn't get my hand out. I was like, eh, not a big deal. Didn't think nothing. And then a paddler came by and he pushed me back up and it's like, I can't get my hand out. Can you help me? So they took my knife and, and cut it opened up. There was a Rapala, um, a topwater lure that had went in my thumb and it was still stuck to the tree. Oh. I didn't feel it at all, ma'am, not at all. And there was no pain, no nothing. It was all rusty, except for when they took it out, that was all shiny where it was in my thumb for six hours. And then, but just before I got that, there was a fisher person across using stainless steel hooks, which is a no-no in Missouri. And he had caught through the the webbing of a soft shell turtle. So I went over there and I took out my knife that had the pliers and said, let me help you get it snap. I cut the hook and took it out to save this. And it took a little bite out of my finger here. So that's this now. <laughs> we get to the takeout. Now we have to unload all the trash, load all the canoes, gotta get the pictures of everybody. And you know, what was your favorite thing? And let everybody, you know, pronounce or you know, let them know that you know what they found is just as important than the next person and started the truck and I'm driving home with the big trailer behind me and the truck was knocking weird it wasn't doing that before and between High Ridge to Arnold I blew a, a spark plug out in my manifold so thumb in finger hurt my engine was <laughs> so I wound up in 
med stop for the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> it is too much fun. So let's, let's really have a serious conversation. I think it'd be a blast. Wear some old tennis shoes. We'll bring our kick nets and, and some trays. And after we get done, or do it the other way. We'll do the water monitoring in the morning so we, so then when we walk through, we're not disturbing it the, the other way around. And we'll have a blast and we'll make a day of it. Invite everybody, a lot of kids. I'm yeah. you to mention the six as being an event. Core, no, Core Island. Okay, you're with yeah. that. Uh, we're getting ready to run the paper. Next month, we're gonna have a clean up with at the end of the month, so it'll be after the 12th. Here in town, we're going to hit the marina again. And I'll, hmm? So I will let you know. You have to talk when this is over about our schedule. And everything. Yeah, and let's just make it happen. Because uh, it's only going to make a wonderful town like St. Jen even more wonderful. Now, the first time we did it, we had about 30 people. Let's but make it 60 this time. And uh, we got local trash to donate us a dumpster. The uh, children workshop and Bill's pallets brought us a whole dumpster of wood and dumped it right up in the middle of the parking lot and we had a bonfire the night before. Uh, and we served hot dogs and stuff to everybody and it was a good time. And then I think our last one was at the ferry. We had about 30 people. And one gentleman, I won't name names, but anyway, one gentleman here brought his boat and would not let us pay to clean his boat up, but he helped. I would say we got three times what we would have normally gotten just by, I mean, he just ruthlessly run his boat aground and let us fill it and everybody push it back out and then go to the landing, throw it in my trailer. I, I think our total that we did was over two tons we took out from the ferry. More so it doesn't. Too, which I think yeah. is stuff people dropping the stuff and putting it in the container. Yeah, you maintain the trash cans at the front. Yeah, that that's made a big difference. It was a gamble, but we put it the paid trash off. cans there to give people. There was no place to put it, and I'm picking up McDonald's, yeah. and you can tell what people were doing. <laughs> Come for their lunch and throwing it out. And now it's going in a can that we maintain. And who eats McDonald's anymore? Well, we've got a lot of options here for lunch if you have 30 miles. Well, okay. uh, well, nothing goes in the dumpsters to get what's left over. That's kind of weird. You don't, cook, don't even go in there and eat half a Big Mac. But I think everyone here, we're going to meet up again, you know, in a month and a half or so. Um, you don't have to run off, but make sure you get some shirts. Um, I brought them for you guys all. There's small through double extra large, some other little knickknacks out there. And um, I think with Fred's help, Scott's help, your team's help, and all of you, I think we can have something spectacular. And, and would you mind advertising it when it comes time? I don't see why not. Yes. We got this, folks. Yeah. Now that we have information, It'll expand both of us. Yeah. And then Scott, work on having this place become a stream team. It sounds like a good idea to me. But my health department is something I've always wanted to do, and I just haven't had time. The last time I looked, I think there was three health departments that had stream teams. They were down in the Ozarks. Well, you know, I know a guy who can help you do that. Who is that? Oh. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. I would just like to say I really appreciate your bringing this up. I, I think that there's been a sort of a blindness to those two streams in particular. I think a lot of people in St. Genevieve don't see those streams. Mm -hmm. And I think if we go down and we look at them and we work at them, we're going to recognize what a tremendous asset they could be for our community. I think at the present time, yeah. Most people just don't even see them. And, and they, what they remember is how much worse they were 50 years ago. Well, they're better than that now, but they could be a lot better. And I think it could be a major asset. 
One thing I found out by working with Missouri River Leaf is, is everybody when they cross over a bridge, especially over a big river, you know, you give it one of them. You know, you always look down. But if you could be one with the water and looking up, it's completely different. It looks better from upward. It makes you feel small. Just like when you're looking down at the river, it looks small or big, depends on. And now that Mr. Cameraman's on you, so I'm gonna do the same for my next branch report. Again, I appreciate this. This has been a blast. This has been a long time coming. Yes, sir. I gotta say something here. Um, so 6,000, over 6,000 teens, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, just so everybody knows, this is the premier program in the world. Mark told me that a long time ago, correct? Yeah. There is, I'm, I'm talking not just this country, and not just this, these states, not as it's only the premier state, but in the world for a program like this. What's Tennessee's motto? The oh. volunteer state. They have nothing on us. Yeah. But if you think over 6,000 teens over the years, and then you can go even further back with Operation Clean Stream, which predated, just think the amount of trash that's been removed and how much trash has not went down into the ocean where it's got sea turtles trapped or, or God knows what. So there's been a huge impact. I mean, how can it not? We picked up trash in nine different states and passed our shirts, including two islands of Hawaii. And I've talked to people there, and I've yet to be anywhere that has a program like this. No, and they all think it's so amazing. And I tell them I do the same thing at home. If I'm camping on this stretch of water in Colorado, my kids and all before we leave are picking up trash and showing off our Missouri Stream Team shirts. Any national park I go to, I don't care if it's on the parking lot, I'll just pick up, if anything, a little bit of trash. I just, I left it better than I left when I came there. You got and, uh, to bring it. And, uh, and you I'm got bring to go home with it. I, I'm always hopeful that we get kids in this because if kids aren't here and they're not learning this stuff, What's the future? Does you know, the future? If you got kids in school and they're in any kind of class and have their teacher, you know, if they show up, you know, give them a couple extra credit points or something like that. Or shoot, if if I know the kids are going to be here, I'll bring different things for the kids. And when we have kids come through Operation Clean Street at my site, it's like hopefully they'll remember this and like in the future, not throw trash out the window in the car. And they do you know. all the time. Yeah. And the, you still and see it daily. We will take it. I think Johnson don't mess with Texas. Well, heck, it worked for how long? Nobody, it's not bad feelings to, to throw stuff out. We've seen it. And, and, and they keep on doing it. It's got to be made. In the yeah, country. I've almost been beat up before. <laughs> you know, hey, you in a pink bikini, don't be throwing stuff in the river. And then all their boys got out of the rest of the canoes and came over and surrounded me. Uh -huh. and, you know, it's like that was a little unnerving, but you know, um, they didn't know what cleanup was going on on the current river. And by the end, when they found out that, you know, some of us are kind of passionate about keeping our stream clean, um, they were picking up, they were picking up trash by the end because they didn't know. Through education, you can change the world. But it might, you know, like me, um, I have to read it twice or sometimes three times to get it up here to stick. So sometimes you have to tell the person two or three times. Um, so yeah. And Brian, there is also too, the stream team program is big on citizen science, not only with biology, but you can also, if you want, do the chemistry part. And then not only that is, is we have a uh, show me snail program. So if you find snails, we'll give you the little jars and the pickling agent so you can set it in because we're trying to inventory all <laughs> snails of Missouri. And something very special which hasn't come out yet is the northern states along the Mississippi have the Lake Sturgeon Watch. It is starting here in a couple more weeks. We're going to have a Lake Sturgeon Watch um, and it's going to start at the Melvin Price Lock and Dam. And we'll have, we're having about nine or 10 volunteers over a three or four week sit there and 
so, you know, in sessions um, and wait until they mate because it's very unique to even watch them mate. And, um, and then the Corps of Engineers is going to try to replicate the same conditions at the Melvin Price Lock and Dam at the uh, next dam upstream so we can get more lake sturgeon um, population growing. But more information will be coming out of that because we have trackers in them. And one fish went all the way up to Chicago and then went all the way to the boot hill and then went back up and it was at the Lock and Dam. And then it went all the way up to the dam on the, the first dam on the, of the Missouri and stayed up there for a year and then traveled all the way back down. So it traveled 45, 5,000 miles in two years. And so that's amazing. We need to have those fish. And they're prehistoric and they're gorgeously ugly. And, and so, yeah, much more coming out. And uh, yeah. Okay, folks, grab your shirts. Thank you. You guys rock. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. I knew it was a good thing that